This is Tashina Gonzalez, and I'm here with my Feel Good Friday on Sunday, like I do sometimes, right? And today I am going to talk about something that is a very specific issue that I suffered from for a long time in my life, and how you can, while working with your doctor to improve, also get some natural support, and that is iron deficiency anemia. So, as you, if you guys know me and my story, uh, when I was younger, I had some gut issues. I was actually throwing up blood and bleeding from my stomach due to ulcers when I was 23. And from then on, I struggled a little bit with anemia, low iron. Um, and at that time, I did not use any real natural remedies and it was just a, like a kind of up and down thing that happened. And then in, in um, 2013, I started having severe hormone issues and I was excessively bleeding most of the time, probably about like 25 days out of a month. And therefore the loss of blood caused iron deficiency anemia for me. And at first I was, um, just supporting it with like synthetic iron tablets, which did not work <laughs> very well. I started with one every other day and then I went to one a day and then I went to two a day and then I went to three a day and it would not stay in my system. It was doing very little good. I did have a minor surgery to fix my hormone issues and stop the excessive bleeding. But prior to that, I actually came across some natural support that helped me to increase my hemoglobin and iron levels in order to support that. So I thought I would come on here because I have seen some people discussing it and give some information about exactly what it is, who suffers from it, and go into how you can, while working with your doctor again, make sure you know your levels, make sure you're working with your doctor, make sure your doctor is supporting you and knowing everything that you're doing, <clears throat> but then you can also do some natural support alongside that. So iron deficiency anemia means that your body does not have enough iron. Your body needs iron to help carry oxygen through your blood to all parts of your body. Iron deficiency anemia affects more women than men and is more common during pregnancy. Iron deficiency anemia is the most common type of anemia, a condition that happens when your body does not make enough healthy red blood cells or the blood cells do not work correctly. And so um, the last time that I had this, this, I had like all of that, like <laughs> I didn't have enough iron, um, my hemoglobin was wrong, my hematocrit levels were, were doing something, and my, my red blood cells were shaped incorrectly, so like everything that could possibly contribute to this is <laughs> what I had the last time I had this. So, <clears throat> um... Your body needs iron to make the hemoglobin and the part of the red blood cell that carries oxygen through your blood to all parts of your body. So who gets iron deficiency anemia? So it affects more women than men, as I stated. The risk of iron deficiency is highest for women who are pregnant, and it affects one in six women. You need more iron during pregnancy and those that have heavy menstruation, so up to 9% of women have it because of heavy bleeding and nearly 20% of African American and Hispanic women suffer from it. So that's why there's a lot of people that I've seen on my timeline that have suffered from this. It can also affect infants, small children, and teens. So what are some of the symptoms? So iron deficiency anemia <clears throat> often develop slowly, and this was my case. The first time that I went to the emergency room when I was excessively bleeding, they did all these tests and they said, oh, you're 100% fine, your body's compensated, you're good. And then like a month or two later is when I started to feel just exhausted. So in the beginning you might not have any symptoms, or they may be mild, as it gets worse, you may notice one or more of these symptoms. So fatigue, that was me. I could barely get through the week. By like Friday or Saturday, I had no energy and I went to stay in bed with as busy as my life is. Weakness, I also had that. Um, I started to do an exercise class, and while I was doing it, I had extreme shortness of breath. breath. Um, I felt very weak. Like I felt like I was 500 pounds instead of like 190 pounds at the time. Low body temperature, which is something that I usually have. 
um, pale or yellow, shallow, sallow skin, rapid or irregular heartbeat. I had that as well. Shortness of breath and chest pain, especially with physical activity. I had that brittle nails, pika, unusual cravings for ice, very cold drinks or non food items like dirt or paper. So those are symptoms. So if you have any of those symptoms and you're not aware that you have iron deficiency anemia, be sure to go see your doctor. So what causes it? Iron loss through bleeding. Bleeding can cause you to lose more blood cells and iron than your body can replace. Women may have low iron levels from bleeding caused by digestive system problems, such as ulcers, colon polyps, and colon cancers. This is the first time that I had iron deficiency anemia. That's the reason that I had it. And so that obviously can affect both men and women. Regular long-term use of aspirin and other over-the-counter pain relievers, which is the contributing factor to why I probably had the ulcers. I used to have migraines all the time, and I used to take Excedrin like it was candy, and that contributed to those digestive issues and those ulcers. Donating blood too often or without enough time between donations for your body to recover. Heavier or longer than normal menstrual periods. Uterine fibroids, which are non-cancerous growths in the uterus that can cause heavy bleeding. And so that was the second time that I had this more recently in 2013 and 2014. And the beginning of 2015 was due to the uterine fibroids. Increased need for iron during pregnancy. During pregnancy, your body needs more iron than normal to support your developing baby. Not eating enough food that contains iron. Your body absorbs the iron in animal-based foods such as meat, chicken, and fish. Two to three iron times better than the iron in plant-based foods, just for information. Vegetarians or vegans who eat little or no animal-based food make sh- need to make sure that they have good sources of iron to make sure they get enough. Your body also absorbs iron from plant-based foods better when you eat them with foods that have vitamin C, such as oranges or tomato. And most people in the United States do not get enough iron from food. So problems absorbing the iron. So certain health conditions such as Crohn's disease um, or celiac disease or gastric bypass surgery for weight loss can make it harder for your body to absorb iron in your food. So um, how to diagnose it, go to your doctor, get a physical exam, talk about the foods that you're eating. Do blood tests, they'll do a complete blood count and they'll measure many parts of your blood and let you know if you have anemia, if you're low on iron, and what they can do for you. So, definitely if you know that you have what we talked about, some digestive issues, heavy blood loss, make sure that you talk to your doctor to see what they can do for you. Um... There's many things that they will, what was recommended for me originally was synthetic iron tablets, the ones that are just like nature's bounty or nature made. Um, My body didn't really absorb them very well and it wasn't working very well. They can also do iron injections. So again, get with your doctor for the best solutions for you. But you also want to do the following. Treat the cause of the blood loss. So talk to your doctor if you have heavy menstrual periods or digestive problems or frequent diarrhea, or blood in your stool. Eat foods with iron. So things such as if you are a meat eater, lean meat and chicken, dark leafy green vegetables, and beans. Make sure you eat them with things that will help you absorb it, like um, oranges, strawberries, broccoli, and other fruits and vegetables that are high in vitamin C. Avoid drinking coffee or tea with your meals. These will make it harder for your body to absorb the iron. And talk to your doctor if you take calcium pills. So calcium can make it harder for your body to absorb iron. And I have to take calcium pills as well because I'm mildly allergic to dairy. So this was one of the things when I started doing the research the second time around and trying to find natural solutions that I need to remember making sure I don't take my my calcium pills around the things when I'm trying to absorb iron. So foods that are rich in iron for those that can eat um, oysters, canned white beans, dark chocolate, liver, spinach, tofu, kidney beans, canned tomatoes, lean beef, baked potato, fortified breakfast cereals, 
and some the vegetarian sources, additional vegetarian sources, chickpeas, lentils and beans. And then again, avoid tea and coffee, milk and some dairy products. Those were uh, those are the things that are going to take the iron out actually if you eat them together, they're you're not going to be absorbent. Foods that contain tannins such as grapes, corn and sorghum. Foods rich in gluten, such as pasta and other products made with wheat, barley, rye, or oats. So, spinach, spinach, spinach. Something you should take every day. You guys know I do my power greens every single morning. That is very rich in iron. It's going to have B12, folic acid. Pomegranates are surprisingly rich in iron and other minerals. They also have a lot of vitamin C. So you can use, you can eat the actual pomegranates or all natural organic pomegranate granite juice. Sesame seeds and, ch and chia seeds. Make sure you consume fermented food. So we talked about the importance of your gut health, making sure you don't have a leaky gut, making sure that you're absorbing everything that you're eating and all the things that you're doing to take in iron. Foods rich in beta carotene because this is essential to um, making sure your red blood cells synthesize correctly. Foods that are in the squash family help with this. If you are a meat eater, consuming more liver. Citrus fruits, again, we talked about that importance of the vitamin C. Um, natural yogurts, if you can have dairy, because they'll be high in the probiotics. And the reason why eating dark chocolate helps is because it lowers your cortisol levels, which helps your absorption boosting capabilities. And then for um, sunflower seeds. So some other things that were really great supplements that helped me a lot that some were recommended to me. So Floretics liquid iron plus herbs so you can just google that you can find that at um, most vitamin stores or health food stores so each has 20 milliliters serving of the rda for women of childbearing age it's non-constipating free of alcohol artificial additives synthetic preservatives lactose it's packaged in environmentally friendly glass bottles it is kosher non-gmo and vegetarian so it has vitamins in it, such as thiamine, riboflavin B6, B12, and it has 60% of your daily iron. What's in it is pear juice, water, grape juice, black currant juice, honey, cherry juice, red beet juice, ascorbic acid as an antioxidant, and natural flavor from concentrate. So obviously you could also drink and eat all of the things that are mentioned in this because that would do you good as well. Another thing that you can add to your diet on a daily basis is unsulfured organic black strap molasses that tends to have 20% of your daily iron in it as well. And then one thing that was super, super helpful for me to take with these. So this was in the period when I started to get natural things into my life. Again, the synthetic tablets will, were not working for me whatsoever. It was obvious that I was going to have to have a surgery, but I wanted my iron levels to be as high as possible and to not be anemic when I had the surgery. So within the three months before that, I started taking these things to assist with that. And then another thing that assisted a lot was um, Ninja Red. So I love my Ninja Red for a million, million reasons. And what that has in it is Ninja Wolfberry Puree, Blueberry Juice Concentrate, Plum Juice Concentrate, Cherry Juice Concentrate, Aronia Juice Concentrate, Pomegranate Juice Concentrate, Grape Seed Extract, Orange Essential Oils, Yuzu Essential Oils, Lemon Essential Oil, Tangerine Essential Oil. So we talked about the citrus and the importance of those. And those essential oils are actually going to make everything more bioavailable and oxygenate your cells. So it helps everything that you're taking be more readily available to your body. And then it also has 4% of your calcium and 2% of your iron in it. So those were the three natural things that I 
while listening to my doctor and following what my doctor wanted me to do, that I add it to my diet in order to speed up the process of helping my body recover in the way that it needed to. So that's the information that I want to share with you guys today. Again, knowing that um, 20% of African American and Hispanic American women are suffering from this. So with me having like 4,800 friends on <laughs> Facebook, that means that's a lot of people. One out of five people are suffering from this. And again, work with your doctor. I'm not a doctor. Make sure you know exactly what you need and you're following everything that they say. But let's try to eat healthier because that is the way to help our bodies in the best way possible. And add in some of these whole food natural things. So the, all three of those things that I mentioned are just food that's made into a juice, right? Or made into something else. So those are whole food supplements that your body recognizes and can absorb and will help in everything that you're doing. So I hope this was helpful to people. And um, from an overall perspective, love that I don't have any hormone issues. I don't even remember like what, you know, PMS cramps feel like whatsoever. So if you need some help beyond that, make sure that you have watched my video that I have that on that subject in uh, on my YouTube channel, how to stay happy during every time of the month, because using natural solutions and remedies like I've never never I went from having major hormone issues to never feeling better and that's one of the reasons why I share this stuff with people because I want everyone to have that amazing feeling be energetic every single time of the month so if you know anyone that can benefit from this please share the video with with them if someone has shared the video with them, with you and you need more information get back with them if I'm that person feel free to message me at any time and again please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys. Have an amazing evening. Bye.